Hello, my name is Tridar, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make realistic looking terrain for Minecraft in World Painter. So we begin by going to the terrain tab over here. And at the bottom, you will notice this little plus icon. And if you mouse over it, it says add a new custom terrain. So if you click on it, it will give you a couple of options. You can create them from scratch, import them from a file or another world. However, today I'm going to show you how to create it from scratch. And the first material I'm going to show you how to create is something I call the Lower Beach. And from here you will notice there is a Simple and a Complex tab. The Simple setting is for if you just want to use a plain material, like if you want to cover everything in bedrock, for example. But what I want to show you is how to use the Complex setting. And as you can see, it brings up a bunch of things here that you don't know what they mean, so let's just go through them one by one. Let's start at the bottom here and we will add our materials. So just click on the default material, which is dirt, I believe. And it will bring up this little menu. And for the lower beach, we want a combination of three materials. The first material is going to be, of course, sand. So we will scroll down to number, I think 12 here is sand. Select that, click OK. So if you'll notice over here in the right hand side, it gives us a preview of what the material will look like. It's just all completely sand. We want two more materials, so we need to go down here to the Add Materials button. Click on that. And it adds a default material again, which is dirt. And as you can see on the right hand side, it updates the preview with a mix of sand and dirt. But of course, beaches are mostly sand. So we want to change this material that we just added to be just a little bit of gravel. And we'll scroll down to that, select it, hit OK. And the last material I like to add is just a little pinch of mossy cobble. And mossy cobblestone is 48, so you have to scroll down just a little bit for that one. Select OK, and now we have a mix of sand, gravel, and mossy cobble. However, the proportions of these are all wrong. So if you'll notice, there is another menu over here that lets us select a count for the blocks. And what this does is basically determines the proportions that the blocks are added in. And if we increase the sand count to 50, hit enter, we now see that the terrain here is now mostly sand. However, there is now too much mossy cobblestone, so we want to lower this value to 1. So this will give us a beach material that will be 50 parts sand, 3 parts gravel, and 1 part mossy cobblestone. But we're not done yet because there is another setting we need to change. There is a noise and a blob setting here, so if we just change it to blobs, you will see it updates over here and now it looks more blobby. There's also a scale setting you can change over here. If we change it to 300, we notice that the blobs become much larger. But for the purposes of the lower beach, 100 will do just fine. What this will end up doing is giving us a beach that is mostly sand, but it will have little patches of gravel here and there. And if we change to the layers setting, it does some very interesting things over here. You can play around with these and they will do various sorts of interesting things. If you want to make natural looking terrain, I haven't really found a good use for this, but it's definitely something to play around with. And as with anything, the best way to learn how to use it is to just put in numbers and play around with things. But for the purposes of the lower beach setting, we want to go back to blobs, leave it at 100, and click OK. And when you do that, you will see another tab that will pop up down here that says custom terrains. And if we mouse over it, we will see the lower beach that we just added. And if you want to go back and change it, all you have to do is click edit the custom material and it will bring you back to the menu that we were just at. So if for instance you wanted to add a bunch of dirt to your beach, just click add material and it will bring back the default dirt set and you can change that to whatever you like. So for the next one, what we want to do is create an upper beach layer. This is going to serve as a transition zone between the lower beaches 
and the upper areas of the map, which usually tend to be covered in, in grass. And for this, we want four materials. So we will just click on this four times. Change the setting to blobs. Change the first material to sand. The second material to gravel. The third material to mossy cobblestone. And the fourth one will be the transition material, which in this case is grass. And for the proportions of those, we want a little bit less sand. We want the same amount of gravel, the same amount of mossy cobblestone, but we want 50 parts grass. So if we look over to the side here, we can now see we have an interesting looking transition material that's partly sand and partly grass. So now that I've showed you how to create those materials, let me show you how to use them. You want to select the spray can, then select the constant square, change the intensity to 100, and if we just spray some down, we will see this covers the entire world in a beach terrain, which we can see here in the 3D view. However, this is not what we want. So we undo that with the button up here. You can also use Control Z for that. Because this is a beach, we want to limit the layers that this applies to. Specifically, because our water is at a height of 77, we want the beach to stop at the height of 78. And we accomplish this by using the at or below setting over here and setting it to 78. So if we apply our brush again, we can see that it only rises as high as level 78. But if we use the sponge tool and remove the water, we will also see that below the water it applies all the way down, and that's not what we want either. So we also want to use the at or above setting, and we want the beach to go down several layers to about 73. So we enter in 73, and we will apply the beach brush again. And if we remove the water to check what we've done, we can now see that it stops at a height of 73. So this means that our beach is only being applied to specific height layers. This is extremely useful and very important for you to learn how to do. So let's zoom out and apply our beach to the entire island. And now we want to shift over to our other terrain we created, the upper beach, and I will show you why we created this. Because our beach stops at level 78 and grass is above all of that, we want a transition layer between the beach and the grass. And this occurs at level 79 in this map. And we want to isolate it to only level 79. And to do that, you enter in 79 in both at or above and at or below. This means it will only affect level 79. So let's apply our brush. And we can see that we now have a transition layer between the lower beaches and the grassy hills above. And now that I've shown you how to create and use these materials, I'm also going to be providing for you today my own personal custom terrains. And to save you some work from having to enter them on every new map you create, I'm going to show you how to use this function here that says import from another world. And to do that is very simple. All you have to do is find this file here, wherever you downloaded it to, and click open. And from there, it will bring up this dialog box letting you select which ones you want to import. For instance, if you don't need the individual single material mesa layers, you can deselect those. Hit OK. And you can see in the custom terrains list, it has now added a whole bunch more stuff here. One of my personal favorites here is the Gray Mountain Rock. It's made up of stone, andesite, and cobble. And instead of the plain rock that we used the first time around, we can now change this. And to do that, we want to select the spray can. We want to deselect the at or above settings. We want to use the constant square brush. But we want this only to apply on the terrain that we use to create the mountain which was rock. So we just rake our brush over that, and it's kind of hard to tell, but the mountain material has now changed to a more interesting looking mix of materials. And there are several other materials on this list. There's a tundra material I've created that's a mix of grass and podzol and permadirt and gravel. 
There's a volcanic badlands material and a volcanic ash material. There is a red mountain rock and a white mountain rock if you would prefer to use one of those instead. There's also highly specific things like riverbeds and ocean floors and sea ice settings and all sorts of good stuff. I know it doesn't look like a lot, but these are all the custom terrains that you should need to make pretty good looking landscapes. So let's load up a copy of the world here and take a look at what we've created. We can see here we have the beach layer and the upper beach over here that serves as a transition between the two layers. This gives us a nice mix of sand and grass. And our island now has a large sandy beach all the way around it. We can also see that the mountain now has a little bit more variation in the materials that it's made of as well. And what I've shown you today can be expanded if you wanted to make an island made of ice, or a volcanic island, or a desert mesa island, or pretty much any sort of terrain you can imagine and create, you can paint on the terrain here. So I hope you found today's tutorial to be informative. The links to download my custom terrains will be available in the description below. And in the next video, I think I need to show you how to create and use custom object layers so we can get some palm trees on our island here. But thank you for watching, and I will see you later.